I have recently been lollygagging around looking at art when I see a painting by Rothko. This one, in particular, and my first thought when I saw it was Estonia. And can you really blame me? Look how similar his paintings, plural, are to the Estonian flag. I mean, if you look at the Estonian landscape for a couple of seconds, you can clearly see the inspiration. But aside from Estonia, it also made me feel nostalgic, because I remember lakes that looked like this at night, dark and dreary, and I felt that the painting was comforting to an extent. Then I found out it was the last painting from the painter before he squad wiped himself. Now his other paintings mostly make me feel absolutely nothing, and I don't really like art where it's just pick four colors or less and put them on a canvas. I think it has the same emotional effect as looking at a color wheel. I mean, come on, it's just a bunch of basic colors, there's only so much emotion they can evoke, and if you're colorblind, those paintings are actually just meaningless. Unless you spill coffee on your white t-shirt and call that meaningful. Or this installation by the same artist, it's just the color blue. He just stole that idea from the ocean. Why look at an infinitely inferior representation of the deep, beautiful, yet unknown ocean, when I can just look at the real thing? But this grey on black painting, I think it does convey the feeling of depression rather well, because depression in itself is quite monotone. Humans actually like monotony to some extent, so I can see how one could get accustomed to the monotony of depression. And that's when I realized depression makes me comfortable, sometimes. Although, I have to clarify, even depression has variations. The sadness archetype is probably the most well-known form of depression. It sucks, and the sadness gets progressively worse the longer it lasts. I would say this is stage 1 of depression, and that most people have some form of sadness associated with their depression. Some people like sadness, actually, and it's not even a bad emotion. I also like being sad occasionally, but being sad is not the same as being depressed. I would say sadness is like the fall of autumn leaves, causing you to reminisce about your childhood, and you realize that you'll never be a kid again. Depression is like drinking absinthe alone while eating a doctor's sausage dunked in Worcestershire sauce on a Saturday at 4am. Nobody would ever want to do this with a healthy mind. But the Homo sapiens sapiens is a creature of habit, and bad habits are especially tough to break. Something might be actively harmful to you, but if it becomes part of your daily routine, you will start to form a couple semi-decent memories with it. Most of us hated school when we actually went there, but over the years the mind only remembers the good parts of your school experience and conveniently forgets our hours upon hours of boring, soul-crushing assignments. Your brain is an unreliable narrator, and you should never fully trust it, even if it starts logically reasoning with you as to why you should go back to your absinthe sausage diet. Because it almost tasted good once. It's comparable to a nicotine addiction, actually, and you've probably already seen a million posts of some twinkish creature smoking a cigarette in the rain, or some sort of remix of Perfect Girl is playing in the background. People who have tried to quit their nicotine addiction report that the cravings never truly go away, and they sometimes return in the most obscure ways. For example, if you used to take a bath while eating ice cream and smoking cigarettes to cope with your eternal suffering, your brain will start to associate that experience with cigarettes, and even after you've quit smoking and take a bath to calm yourself down, you'll get that forbidden craving again. I think this exact concept applies to depression as well. And that's why it can be comfortable sometimes. You might have a social circle now, with people that you love, but boy wasn't it great being alone and just watching movies all day, and playing some Minecraft on a rainy night. You didn't have to shower or take care of yourself at all for that matter. You could go to sleep whenever, and wake up whenever you wanted. Sure, you might have been miserable and even wanted to die, but it wasn't that bad now, was it? Most of the time, your mind is your biggest enemy, because it wants to survive with minimal effort, and it constantly craves pleasure, even if it's not good for you. It wants to keep you in your comfort zone, even if your comfort zone makes you depressed, miserable, and lifeless. It also tries to control you with BOO, fear, 
Because going outside of your comfort zone is scary and unpredictable. And what if the South American eyeball snatcher comes out of a bush and snatches your eyeballs with its tentacles? What if I go to the store to buy some toothpaste and the cashier slams me to the ground, pulls out a broadsword and stabs me to death? And this is why anxiety goes hand in hand with depression. Your brain will use the most clinically insane methods to keep you safe. So I repeat, don't trust it. If your brain is ill, it will have ill thoughts that do not reflect reality. You will have to learn to either ignore or deal with these thoughts if you don't want to be depressed anymore. And you have to stay alert because one slip up might bring you back to the absinthe sausage. From my personal experience, there is definitely a sort of comfort in depression. The food you eat, the games you play, they are actually comforting. The problem is that you are comforting yourself to get away from all these bad thoughts you have. Maybe you've been depressed for so long that the memories of your time being depressed become nostalgic. And nostalgia gaslights us into believing times were good, even if they were the farthest thing from it. Listening to a video essay about The Simpsons Golden Age while playing your favorite video games is cozy, but sometimes life isn't cozy. And if you want to be able to handle life when it gets tough, you have to face your problems. You have to leave your comfort zone. I understand how this can be very difficult, especially for those who are surrounded by a depressing landscape. Trust me, I have seen Eastern Europe. I know what it's like to go outside and see giant grey slabs of concrete that resemble artificial beehives more than anything. Your country has corrupt politicians that are causing the country to collapse, food is not always a certainty, and war is on the horizon. If you grew up in such an environment, all of these terribly depressing things suddenly make you feel warm and fuzzy inside. Sure, you might have had an awful childhood, but it was still your childhood and you learned how to feel comfort in such a harsh and cold environment. If your brain craves equilibrium, and your equilibrium has become depression, it will crave to want to go back to a depressive state again. But how do you go about not falling back into your old habits? Well, I can't speak for everyone because this is a very individual problem that probably takes more to solve than some doofus in a YouTube video. But here's how I sometimes deal with my irrational mind. I imagine myself explaining the reasons for my anxiety and depression to another person and that makes me realize how silly I'm actually being and that I don't have to do things that make me miserable just because I've grown accustomed to it. Of course, this works even better when you can talk about your feelings with an actual person, but a lot of people don't have that privilege, especially severely depressed and closed off people. Besides, it's really difficult to trust another person so much that you're willing to tell them your deepest, darkest thoughts. This is where I also think therapy can fail. Because if the person isn't even willing to talk about this with their loved ones, why would they be willing to talk to somebody that they're paying real money for just to listen to them vent? So if you're on your own, fear not, you could change your life by the 5 minute minimum rule. Going outside even if it's only for 5 minutes. Exercising every day even if it's for only 5 minutes. Talking to strangers even if it's see you get the point. The most important thing with the 5 minute minimum is that you do it every day so you can gradually change your routine. And replace it with a healthier one at the same time. Some tasks will be easier than others so start small where you only experience slight discomfort and work your way up as you become accustomed to discomfort and new environments and experiences. If you stick to it, you could change a lot. I'm even currently benefiting from this rule as I speak, so stay consistent, don't give in to comfortable depression. Thank you everyone for watching this video so far to the very end, I hope you got something from it, and I hope you have a great day. Bye bye.